I'm really excited and uh, I, I say that quite a bit in my videos, right? But I really am excited today to talk to you about a new technology uh, or a new application of technology that is really powerful, really interesting. And that is Google's Notebook LM. So this is kind of popular right now on the internet because it is really effective at creating podcasts. So I'm gonna walk through how this system creates the podcast and then really what that means to academia. This affects us in several different ways. So I wanna make sure that I explain it properly and then leave it open so that we can have a discussion about this within the comments as well, because I'm very interested in what your thoughts are as far as application and utilization of this really powerful tool. So this is something that's coming to us from Google and it's an aspect of their own AI, which is the Gemini. So this uses Gemini in the creation process. So I'm gonna go through and create a podcast step-by-step step to show you how to actually do it. And then from there, we'll talk about applications. Because this works through Google, you would simply make sure that you're logged into Google. So if, as long as you're logged into your Gmail account, you'll be able to access this. From there, you simply go to notebooklm.google.com and that will open up your, your interface. The interface is pretty simple. It shows you here, it says, create your first notebook. So you wanna create a notebook first because then you'll be able to interact with this notebook. The, the notebook aspect is really powerful because now that you have the content, you, you'll, you'll feed it content, then you'll be able to interact with it in a multiple of ways. You could ask it questions, you could uh, use the AI to find information for you, all really interesting and cool things. We've seen that quite a bit in some other AIs where they're able to answer questions about whatever you upload. So it's a similar thing here. The big thing here is that this is really highlighting the multimodal capabilities of this AI because it'll create the podcast. So let's go back to how you actually do that. So here I am, I'm going to create a, a notebook and this is my first notebook. So when I go in, I'll go in and I will say that I want to upload, right? So from here it says to create. So I'm just going to create, click on create. And now it says upload from upload whatever sources. It could be one or it could be multiple sources. And you can see here, it allows me to put in content in several different ways. I could put it in from a Google Drive, from a link, uh, from a file I'll, I have, or I could paste the content directly. So here I'm going to simply paste text where I have a little section here where I can put in text. I'm gonna put in, and as an example here, I'm putting in the first chapter of my most recent book that talks about the nine point action plan for generative AI integration into education. So this is the, the first entire chapter. I'm just putting it in here as an example for you. Once I do that, then it comes up really quickly with this saying, hey, we've got the content. Here's a summary of it. Now I can interact with it in different ways. It has, has questions that I could ask, suggested questions, or I could start typing a question to be able to interact with it, to chat with my document. But what I wanna do here, the whole purpose of this video, is to create a podcast. So right here where it says audio overview, deep dive conversation, that's what I'm gonna click on. And you can see it says two hosts, English only. That's probably going to be changing as, cause again, this is brand new. So there'll probably be more more voices, more capabilities, more languages that you'll be able to create a podcast in. Those are all possibilities here in the future. But for now, it just has these set of voices. It's gonna be two hosts for your podcast, and that's all you got for right now. So I'm simply going to click Generate. Once I do that, it's going to go through and start working. It'll say this may take a few minutes, so you can come back to it if you want to, or just wait. When I did this one, it ended up taking a total of two minutes and 43 seconds. So it took two minutes and 43 seconds and then it gave me a file that's seven minutes and three seconds long. So here's the thing, right? It's really impressive. I, I think that it's, it's something that I would listen to. I'm already interested in this, right? Because I started to play it and I, I couldn't believe the quality of it. I'm gonna play just a little bit of it to get you to understand how effective this is. Now remember, this is simply an AI creating two synthetic voices that are talking about the content that I just uploaded. The big thing here is that they are adding so much more to what I uploaded 
because they're trying to make it conversational. The whole idea with creating a podcast is that it's not just reading through the content, right? It's not just a, an audio book. No, this is much more. This is two different hosts and they're having a conversation about the content, making it really nice and easy to understand, to having like a conversational tone. That's the whole idea of a podcast. And that's exactly what this thing does. So I'm gonna play just a minute or so of it for, for you to get a feel for it. Hey everyone, and welcome to another deep dive. You know, trying to keep up with AI and education these days, it's like, well, drinking from a fire hose, isn't it? Totally. But today, we're ditching the fire hose and grabbing like a well-organized map. Mm. We're talking generative AI in education and how to actually make it work, you know, practically mm -hmm. with a real action plan. Yeah. So we're diving into Brent Anders' nine-point action plan for generative AI integration, specifically from chapter one. Right. And Lucky for us, we have an expert who's been doing some serious research, even working directly with universities on this very thing. And you're so right about that fire hose feeling. I mean, things are changing so fast in the AI world. Even educators who've seen it all are feeling a bit, you know, overwhelmed, like headlights. Totally. And that's exactly why I was so interested in Anders' emphasis on policy. Yeah. It feels like the one thing that can bring some order to all this, well, chaos, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like, universities have adapted to new tech before, but has it ever been this fast? I mean, never, right? It's the speed that's really unprecedented. Think about it. ChatGPT mm. went from like zero to 100 in what felt like a week last year. And then wham, Bing AI and Google Bard show up. Yeah. And this isn't some far off future. This is impacting students and teachers right now. It's true. It's like every time I open the news, there's a new AI and education headline, good or bad. So it makes sense that Anders spends so much time on getting those policies right, right from the start. And what I found really interesting is that he doesn't just put all the pressure on administrators to figure this out alone. It's like he's calling for a massive group effort, right? Absolutely, yeah. He really emphasizes getting everyone involved, faculty, students, curriculum committees, literally everyone who's part of the education landscape. It's not something you see every day, you know? It's huge. It's like he's saying, this is bigger than all of us. We all need to be in on this which makes me even more curious about what those policies actually look like in practice and, you know, are they even working? So what did you think? I thought it was really impressive. Uh, and again, it's something that really is kind of captivating. So there's lots of implementations here, which I'll talk to about in a second. But first, I wanted to show you that when this is created, you have a couple different options as far as what you can do with it. So here you can modify things such as the playback speed. You can also download it or delete it. So the great thing is here that when you download it, it'll come to you as a WAV file. So from the WAV file, you can change it into MP3 or you can do anything you want to with it. It's a very usable file, a WAV file. Another question might be, well, how much content can I put up there? If you look here within Google Help documentation, it says that there's a word limit overall of 500,000 words per source. So you could have multiple sources. So I could have uploaded multiple chapters of my book if I wanted to, and they would all, uh, as long as they're each below 500,000 words, then I'd be totally fine. That's, that's quite a bit, that's quite a, a huge amount of words that it allows. Very powerful capabilities, very powerful tool in being able to create a really usable podcast. So now let's talk about what that means for academia, what that means for, for, for us as faculty members. Well, many of us use podcasts as an actual thing as far as a requirement or an assessment, an assignment that we might give. So now what are we going to do as far as these type of assignments? Don't worry. It's not that big of a deal as far as trying to think about this. Now, right now, a student couldn't really just say, hey, do this podcast for me and make it sound awesome and make it use my voice. It doesn't have that capability yet. There's other sources that you could use to create, uh, create a voice, but right now, as far as it being able to do this whole conversational thing, this, this, uh, this system doesn't accept other voices yet, right? That's something that could be coming right around the corner. But as far as the assignment itself, we have to think about, well, what is our SLO? What are we looking for? Now, the, the ability for a student to use this type of tool, that could be an SLO in itself, right? It could be that I want the tool or I want the student to be able to use technology in an advanced way to be able to uh, create something using technology. Okay, then this would definitely fit that bill. But if we want the student to 
express themselves and show an understanding of the content by creating a podcast, well, there's a, a bit missing here, right? In the process, because all I had to do was upload a document and it created the entire podcast for me. So what we need to be thinking about is, well, okay, I want my student to create a podcast, but I want them to go through a certain process. I want them to really engage with the content. So an idea here would be that when we assign this, we break it down into different steps. Remember from a previous video where I talked about the share technique, one of the aspects there is to make sure that the assignment is broken down. You can expand it into multiple steps. So one might be that, hey, you have to do brainstorming to come up with this idea. Maybe you want them to create the script and turn it in, or at least have uh, a storyboard as far as what's gonna go on within that podcast. Many different ways that you can do that. And on top of that, you can have them do different components in class. They could do brainstorming in class. They could do brainstorming as far as using AI or not using an AI. It's all up to you. You're making those purposeful decisions as that instructor. You can have them work on storyboards in class. You can have them write a script in class. All sorts of things you decide as far as do you want them to do that with the assistance of an AI or not. So those are some, some different ways of some, some different things. Another part, and again, this comes from the share technique as well, is that the assessment aspect could have multiple components. So yes, one thing could be the product uh, where, hey, here is my, my, my video or my podcast. And now that I've made this podcast, well, now I have to give a two minute presentation about it in class. Or it might just be a minute of Q and A where I have to know the content, I have to know what's in there. So that would be a very powerful way to help ensure that students are held accountable for their learning. Another interesting technique, and again from the share technique, would be that, okay, they turn in this assignment, they turn in their podcast, and now you have them write a reflection paper about it. This could be done in class or out of class, where they have to contemplate what went through the process. They have to reflect on that. So now they're, they're reflecting, they're going through, they're writing out about the process, what they learned, uh, the content, all these things. Again, done in class or out of class. You decide, you make those choices. So again, that the, the podcast itself as an assignment, as an assessment is not dead. Don't worry, uh, this is just one great tool, but you can, still, you can still function as far as using the podcast as an assessment technique. You just need to make sure that the way that you're implementing it takes these things into account. There's gonna be more and more tools that can just create the finished product, but the way that you implement it, the things that you require from them, things done in class, things done out of class, breaking it down into steps, those, all those things that go into the process of doing this, that can still be a major aspect of this assignment, whether that's formative assessments or summative assessments, they're all important. So again, different ways of implementing it. The, the, the podcast is still a great assignment. You can still do it. Uh, and I hope the, those, uh, those techniques will, will help you with that. Now, the other part in academia that we should really be thinking about is simply use of, of this tool to help with comprehension. It is really nice to hear uh, academic text being put into a podcast. The way that the system does it, it's very conversational, it's very easy to listen to. So this could be uh, something that we use in addition to academic text, right? I'm not saying to get rid of anything, I'm just saying this is another source. This could function as a scaffolding. So here is my academic text, you don't understand it? Okay, here's a podcast of it to help you get a better understanding. Maybe an overview is done through podcasts and now for specifics, use the academic text. Lots of different ways to use this. Lots of different ways to help students to learn the content. You might assign something based off of the academic text, but you'll go over this part with them and they simply listen to this in class or they have to listen to this on their own and then use this as their source to write more up about it. So lots of possibilities of engagement of using this, but it is a very powerful tool. Um, additionally, in academia, one way to really push out our content that we create, meaning our research, our discoveries, our ideas, would be through a podcast. It makes it very easy to listen to. So that's something to really consider because I think it can really enhance academia overall. It can help with engagement, with motivation, just with interest in itself for all these different aspects. I'm really, really interested in your thoughts on this as well. 
Do you do podcasts as part of your assignments and assessments? If so, how is this going to change things? Um, again, think about the techniques that I talked about, but I'm really interested to, to see what the community thinks and, and how the community might implement this new tool. It's very powerful, very useful, and it's free, so that's always a big plus. So please comment, please like, please share, so that we can continue to build our community of inquiry. And remember, learning is for life. Thank you.